Okay, magandang umaga po ulit. I am Raymond Estrella, the principal author of the ILS 2021 working paper titled Study on the Filipino Health Workforce, a Sequential Exploratory Analysis of the Decent Work Outcomes in Metro Manila, Metro Davao, uh, Metro Cebu Hospitals. Very proud to present our research team because we covered all pillars of decent work. That's why we needed expertise from the three technical divisions of the Institute for Labor Studies. We have contributors from the Employment Research Division, Workers' Welfare Research Division, and of course, the lead division is the Labor and Social Relations Research Division. A quick outline of my presentation, we have the overview and preliminaries, research findings, key takeaways, conclusion, and of course, our policy recommendations. To start, this study is in partnership with the Career Development and Management Division of the Health Human Resource Development Bureau of the Department of Health, primarily aiming to craft policies and programs geared toward guaranteeing a sufficient supply of competent human resources for health in the country and in accordance with the implementation of the National Human Resources for Health Master Plan for 2020 to 2040 and the Universal Health Care you want to provide baseline data of the domestic working conditions, including migration prospects of healthcare workers in the Philippines. And the output of this study is positioned to be used by the Department of Health and as well as the HRH Network Philippines, a multi-sectoral body composed of 18 government agencies and private organizations responsible for harmonizing policy directions to attain quality healthcare for every Filipinos. We also consider this important components in our presentation. Of course, the issues and challenges in our healthcare system brought by the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, as we all know as well, that our healthcare system is generally overwhelmed and nearly confronted the brink of collapse with our healthcare workers are mostly exhausted and continuously challenged by HRH deficit. And we realized the importance of HRH planning, management, and development for us to be able to secure policy interventions in the critical dimensions of the Philippine healthcare sector, such as the decent work situation, labor migration governance, and even uh, stakeholders collaboration. Next, for us to be able to address the demand of that policy agenda, our research objectives, mm -hmm. the study aims to provide a descriptive analysis of healthcare workers' decent working situation. Of course, we included their challenges and opportunities in the three metropolitan hospitals uh, areas in the country, Metro Manila, Metro Cebu, and Metro Davao. And specifically, uh, the study also aimed to look into the decent work situation, especially in the areas of employment, rights at work and working conditions, social dialogue, social protection, and even opportunities for skills development in our hospitals. And also mm -hmm. to analyze the implications of the domestic decent work situation, including the human resource development systems and practices on the labor migration governance of our healthcare workers. And to be able to achieve these objectives, the study adopted a sequential exploratory research design. Mm -hmm. We started with our qualitative data and then quantitative data and then the interpretation of both data for us to come up with the results and discussion. Also mm -hmm. for our research methods, we use online survey for our quantitative part and mostly focus group discussions and some key informant interview for a qualitative part. Mm -hmm. And of course, this research of our available secondary data, especially data from the Department of Health. Mm -hmm. And our sampling technique for our, our online survey is stratified sampling method. We use the strata of location because we identified hospitals from Metro Manila, Metro Cebu, and Metro Davao. And we targeted at least 50% of hospitals in each of the study site. Mm -hmm. And for all our research instrument in both qualitative and quantitative part, we follow this domain or some sort of like a themes. Uh, we have the hospital profile, employment, rights at work and working conditions, social protection, migration prospects, and even the opportunity opportunities for skills development. And our study also honored the uh, principles of gender relevance and ethical considerations, uh, such as voluntary participation of, of all our research participants, anonymity, and even uh, gender neutrality. Uh, for this particular study, we had to secure an ethics review clearance because this is in partnership with the DOH. And the research 
team was required to secure an ethics review clearance to ensure the safety of the researchers and more importantly, our research participants. Uh, the purpose of the ethics review clearance is to uh, increase the legitimacy of the research findings and to ensure that the research leads to beneficial outcomes. And on August 27, 2021, uh, we were granted by the Single Joint Research Ethics Board of DOH the Certificate of Exemption from Ethics Review. So we attach this certificate in all our research um, instrument uh, for the information of our research participants. For our framework, we also followed and take into consideration the decent work pillars and also the DOLE organizational outcomes such as employment facilitation, employment preservation and regulation, workers' protection and welfare, and of course, the corresponding domains, as you can see, uh, which you also use in all our research instrument. And I'm very pleased to present to you our findings. Of course, we have three main parts for our findings. We have from the employer's perspective of the decent work situation in the metropolitan hospitals, and we also have employees' experiences. And third, we also look into the decent work situation and labor migration of healthcare workers and the implication of migration in our healthcare system. Uh, first, we have the target respondents. So in total, we received a completed submission of 72 hospitals. This is an establishment-based survey. So one survey response is equivalent to one hospital. So overall, we uh, uh, gathered 72 responses and that translates to 109% in all the uh, study sites. And to be specific, in Metro Manila, we received 46 responses or 102 uh, response rate. In Metro Cebu, we had 13 hospitals. So that's 130% response rate in Metro Cebu. And in Metro Davao, we received 13 hospitals. Um, and that is 118% submission. For the hospital profile, among the 72 uh, completed submissions from our hospitals in uh, all study sites, 65% of them have the approved bed capacity of 100 to 500 beds. Next, 21% uh, have less than 100 beds. 10% uh, of them have what, 501 to 1,000 beds, and only 4% have more than 1,000 beds. And for the hospital size, a majority of them, 71%, uh, with small or with less than 100 to 999 employees, followed by 22%, uh, with medium, uh, with 1,000 to 100, 999 employees, and then 7%, uh, large hospitals with 2,000 and above employees. And for the number of employees, uh, the lowest employee uh, number is 69 the highest is 5,371, and the average employee size for all the respondents is 765. And as to the nurse to patient ratio, meaning one nurse is to one patient, the lowest or the most ideal uh, ratio is one is to two. And uh, the highest is one is to 32, and of course, the average ratio is one is to 10 uh, for our hospital respondents. Mm -hmm. And some additional data for our uh, hospital profile, the total sex disaggregation data, 62% of our respondents, uh, their workers are primarily female and 38% uh, of their workers are male. And also this is reflective to each of the study site. In Metro Cebu, a majority of the employees are female with 66%. 61% in Metro Manila and 62% in Davao. And as to the employee classification, as you can see, 86% uh, are rank and file. And also you can see the regional distribution in each of the study site here, Metro Cebu, Metro Manila, and Metro Davao, uh, almost more than half, 91%, 85%, and 82% are rank and file employees. And as to the age group, 60% of the total health workers were within the 25 to 39 age bracket. And some key takeaways from our findings, both from the integration of our, our quantitative and qualitative data. Mm -hmm. First, 
six out of 10 health workers covered in the survey are female. And this further supported the data from the 2018 National Migration Survey that the females dominate the Philippine health profession. Number two, 60% uh, of the healthcare workers were within the 25 to 39 years old, or mostly referred or were very familiar with this term now, the millennial generation. Also, 75% of the hospitals follow the 40-hour working time per week, which is the standard schedule for many full-time occupation here in the Philippines. And of course, uh, this is in the healthcare sector, and uh, our respondents are mostly are all hospitals. Next, uh, uh, during the pandemic, hospitals had different flexible work arrangements, such as compressed work week, 57% of our respondents work from home, 49%, and even flexible working hours or flexi time, 44% uh, of our respondents. And as you can see here, uh, the pandemic really highlighted the emergence of these flexible work arrangements, especially uh, the compressed work week or flexibility in their schedule because they have to adopt to the changing requirements and schedule in the hospital and as well as the number of patients that they need to cater each day. Moreover, for the compensation and benefits, I think this is an, um, an important slide as well. Based on the study findings, uh, of course, the salary of health workers in public hospitals is mandated by the salary standardization law and categorized usually by salary grade. Uh, but as you can see in the graph, the overall average salary in all of the hospitals, you can see public hospitals and private hospitals here. Uh, the maximum amount of salary of physician is 30,000 pesos. And this is primarily because they are mostly on affiliation basis and they also work in different hospitals and various hospitals in their area. For nurses, uh, Nurses in public hospitals receive a higher salary range than those in private hospitals, and it is the same case with medical technologists. On the other hand, uh, laboratory technicians in private hospitals receive a higher salary than those in public hospitals, and also admin staff receives the same salary for both public and private hospitals. And for other positions, they receive an average salary of 25,000 pesos. And again, this data um, is, is from the 72 hospital respondents that, that we gathered from our um, quantitative survey. Uh, furthermore, while all hospitals comply with the prescribed occupational safety and health standards, uh, only 81% of the hospitals require a mandatory OSH seminar for employees, and uh, the OAH law uh, require that, especially for new employees, they need to require the, to attend the OAH seminar. Next, 60% of the hospitals do not have a labor union representing the interests of the employees and the organization. Um, from the private sector, only 37 and uh, from the public sector, six. And out of the 27 hospitals that have existing collective bargaining agreements, five hospitals cover non-regular workers and 12 hospitals have included COVID-19 related provisions in catering to the demands and prerequisites of the so-called new normal. Because um, as you can see here, CBAs also need to adopt, they need to Graph new provisions that will cater to the demands of the COVID-19 pandemic because uh, the needs of our healthcare workers are also changing and so the provisions of the CBA uh, for most hospitals. Next, 17 hospitals have in indicated membership in the Hospital Industry Tripartite Council, which is very important to maintain uh, harmony in the healthcare industry. Uh, next, 17 hospitals have indicated provision of accommodation, for example, dormitory and in-house lodging and subsistence allowance, uh, legal and outpatient services. And this is further highlighted by the pandemic because most of the healthcare workers need to stay in-house uh, to prevent uh, the uh, further exposure to the virus, especially when they're traveling to and from their residence to, to the hospitals. Next, 56 hospitals implemented different programs catering to women's needs, such as providing breastfeeding area for nursing employees and a dedicated VAUSI help desk for their employees. And this is also reflective of our first 
key research finding because majority of uh, healthcare workers in the Philippines are female. Mm -hmm. Next, among the primary reasons reported by the hospitals for poor performance include deficiency in soft skills, lack of expected behavioral skills, shortage of technical and socioeconomic skills, and of others, uh, lack of leadership skills. And as you can see here, while the hospitals focus on uh, position specific or very technical training for their uh, employees, we also need to take into consideration the soft skills training for our healthcare workers. Next, almost all hospitals, 96% of them perceive that COVID-19 really impacted the availability of healthcare workers in the Philippines. And most of the hospitals, 85% of them view that COVID-19 also significantly impacted the quality of recent graduates in the medical field. Last two key takeaways. Uh, number 14, 13 private hospitals noted that around 20 to 29 of their workforce moved out of the country in the last five years. And healthcare workers in the private sector are more likely to migrate abroad than their public sector counterparts. And last key takeaways, various factors motivate our healthcare workers to move abroad and the top reason has always been economic in nature such as higher compensation and much better benefits in other countries and from these key takeaways we come up with our recommendations based on our framework which i showed uh, earlier first uh recommendations for employment facilitation uh, i'd like also to note that our recommendation are mostly stakeholder specific already first uh, we need to strengthen digital health workforce education and training in the Philippines in coordination with the Department of Information and Communication Technology to leverage our online platform and provide available opportunities for our healthcare workers. Next, to reinforce competency framework for domestic health systems and mm -hmm. international health labor market because we also need to assess and ensure that our framework are still responsive uh, with the local needs and as well as international demands. Um, next, uh, we need to maximize the role of the local government units in the decentralization and health service del delivery in partnership with the Department of Interior and local government because we need to ensure that the fiscal and managerial ability of our local government units are still responsive um, on their health devolved functions. Next, employment preservation and regulation. First, uh, we recommend to propose a competitive, equitable, and decent salary structure designed for growth for our healthcare workers because we need to uh, ensure that also review the social and economic aspect of a salary structure for us to be able to uh, respond to the needs of our healthcare workers. And this is in coordination with the Civil Service Commission and DBM for public hospitals and PRC for private hospitals. Uh, next, intensify labor education and encourage active participation in policy and decision-making process. We need to uh, empower our employees to participate in different social dialogue mechanisms in their organization because labor unions uh, are establishing partnership to be able to harmonize with the management. And um, next, uh, to boost the role and functions of the DOLE in enforcing compliance with uh, labor standards, maybe to add more um, functions to also uh, regulate private hospitals and other private health organizations to aid them in their full recovery from the adverse impact of the pandemic. And last theme, uh, for the workers' protection and welfare, we recommend to institutionalize the social protection floor uh, to be able to uh, ensure that all groups in the society have equal access to more inclusive, uh, sustainable growth and greater well-being. And as the lead agency, the DOLE is also committed to pursuing institutionalization of the social. And in relation to that, uh, we also need to ensure from a rights-based perspective that the level of benefits must also be adequate because this is not just for the healthcare workers uh, themselves alone, but also for their families. And lastly, uh, we also recommend to introduce support programs uh, for persons with disabilities, indigenous and vulnerable and precarious workers in the healthcare sectors uh, because uh, we need to design appropriate and responsive policy interventions and the Bureau of Workers with Special Concerns and the BLE 
your local employment to Dole may introduce programs for these kinds of workers by providing them opportunities for capacity development, including other welfare and well-being programs. And um, ultimately, in general, we also recommend the continuous collaboration um, with the hospital industry sector, supported by the DOH as, as the lead agency and also the HRH Network Philippines in ensuring the employability of our workers, uh, protection of workers' rights, and maintenance of industrial peace in the healthcare sector, and uh, also the recommendation for further health research projects to supplement our current baseline data and come up with more evidence-based and data-driven policy recommendations. That's it. Maraming salamat po uh, for, for listening.